We have problems all around us. Some may happen to ourselves or our families, while some may happen to others. Deep inside, all of us want to solve these problems. But at times, we might not know where to start. To be able to succeed in solving a problem, we first need to have a good, deep understanding of the problem itself and the value that our solution can bring to the table while solving the problem. Since we generally have a good understanding of the problems that are immediately around us, that is, say, to ourselves or our families, we are more likely to succeed in solving those problems first. In my case, I grew up in a joint Indian family, and I lived with my parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, cousins, all under one roof. My elder uncle was unfortunately diagnosed with the Parkinson's disease at an early age of 42. As you might be aware, Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disorder that is caused because of the less secretion of a chemical called dopamine in the body. About 7 to 10 million people around the world suffer from this disease. One of the major symptoms of this disease are involuntary tremors, which start from one limb and spread across the entire body as the disease progresses. Eventually, they become so unbearable that the medications do not suffice. And in such cases, patients may opt for surgery as the last resort. From the last nine years, I've been observing the challenges that my uncle had to face. Eventually, his disease progressed so much that he had no option but to undergo the deep brain stimulation surgery. In this surgery, they implant electrodes on the brain, and signals to these electrodes are provided by a brain pacemaker, which is installed under the collarbone. These signals help suppress the tremors. One of the major challenges that my uncle had to face during the initial stages and during, the stage, during his stage of progression were his frequent visits to the doctor. In my uncle's case, his doctor was located in a different city altogether, and this created a lot of inconvenience for my uncle and my family. I saw that, and the dosage that the doctor gave was completely based on the narrated experience of the patient, which made this entire process a trial and error exercise. And I saw that there clearly was a need to make this process a little less cumbersome, a little more scientific. Education is a privilege often taken for granted. But this privilege comes with a responsibility, the responsibility to alter and control things around you for the betterment of humanity. As they say, one cannot control what one cannot measure. That brings me to the title of my talk, How to Manage Parkinson's Tremors Through Tremor Profiling. What if I tell you that there is a way through which doctors can have real-time, on-demand access to the tremor patterns of the patient? What if I tell you that there is a way through which doctors can, get real, can, can check in real-time if the medication is turning out to be effective and covering the entire day effectively? What if I tell you that there's a way to measure the tremor level of the patient, similar to, say, glucose level or cholesterol level? Hi, this is Jui Keskar, and I'm a STEM student pursuing my 10th grade in India. Based on my observations of my uncle, I have built a wearable tremor profiling device for patients with Parkinson's disease. It's called J-Tremor 3D. This device can be made available in the form of a glove or a strap, which captures the tremor information from the limb at a predefined interval of every one-tenth of a second. This arrangement also includes a controller that communicates with the gloves and straps that the patient may have worn on each limb and the cloud database. The overall tremor level, called J-Tremor Index, is calculated at runtime on the cloud database 
based on the data that is received from the controller. So as you can see, the controller and the devices, the controller captures the data from the devices and sends it to the cloud database, which can then be accessed by doctors and caregivers through web and mobile applications, respectively. Some of the benefits of my device include um, this information can be made available to doctors during the dosage planning process, which can assist them to adjust the dosage and medication accordingly. This can also assist the caregivers of deep brain stimulation surgery patients for retuning the brain pacemaker. This brain pacemaker has to be retuned frequently according to the changing tremor profile of the body. And this is usually done by the caregiver of the patient based on their gut feeling. So let us take a specific use case. Say the patient is visiting the doctor either for the first time or when there is a need for dosage replanning. Step one, the patient visits the doctor. Step two, the doctor checks the patient and gives the initial medication. In this step, the doctor also leases this device to the patient. Step three, the patient wears this device as much as possible or when there are tremors. Step four, the patient revisits the doctor and the doctor checks the tremor profile of the patient and may adjust the dosage accordingly. Two patterns have already been applied for this, uh, for this invention while I'm still deciding my future course of action. While this device, unfortunately, has not been very helpful for my uncle as of yet, I believe it may add some value to the lives of Parkinson's patients so that they can lead a better life despite the disease. And they feel a sense of equality and don't get isolated from the society. While the future is unknown, I believe if we remain empathetic and compassionate, we are likely to end up doing the right work. Through these initiatives, if I'm able to bring a change in even one patient's life, it is still a worthwhile endeavor. Thank you.